Hey guys, Coach Jason, I hope you're doing well. So I want to talk about some of the important ingredients. You know, what are things that you need to check off on the box to make sure that you know that you're ready. Uh, you know, you're doing the right things to ready to run a 5K or a 10K or a half marathon or a marathon. Obviously, preparations for each one is a little bit different and a little bit longer as the races get longer. But with that said, are you doing the things that you need to do to make sure that you're not only ready to run the race, but you're healthy enough to toe the line, you're strong enough to recover from it on the back end, and you're doing the other little things to make sure that you're just staying healthy and enjoying yourself along the way. And you know this is, this is important because it relates to all the other videos that I do. And if you look in the description, I've got boatloads of training videos. I'm actually in the middle of a marathon training series talking about five essential workouts that you need to be doing. Uh, and I use certain milestones for each video. So I've done 10 minutes a mile, 9.30. Nine minutes, eight thirty. I'm going dropping by thirty second increments, all the way down to five thirty, maybe even five minutes per mile. So, and I've done that for ten k half marathon and five k as well. So take a look at them too. So you'll see how to progress from five k to the longer stuff as well in terms of workouts and runs and stuff. So, but I want to go over a couple things. Okay, the first thing to to, to kind of uh, kind of ask and and learn is, are you willing and do you have the time to you know run four or five days a week? particularly in the beginning when you you, know, you want to run a 5K. Now, you can do a couch to a 5K thing. Can you get ready for a 5K in six weeks? Yeah, you can. But on the back end, you know, I, want to, I, I like to make sure that you're not only ready for that particular race, but you're also ready to either not only ready to recover from it on the back end, but ready to keep building and transitioning upward if you want to do that. So um, something to keep in mind. But do you have the availability and willingness to put in four to five days a week of running? Okay. Uh, on a minimum, at a minimum, and um, you know, obviously, the longer the races go, the, the the difference in focus. You know, where when you're training for a marathon, I mean, do you have more time on the weekends to devote to building a long run over time as well? We'll go over that in a second. But so the first thing to kind of investigate and negotiate with is, do you have you know the time and the willingness to put in at least four or five days a week of running? Okay, running itself, you know, with two days off or a cross training day and a day off, or depending on what you're training for, you can progress from four to five days to five to six to six to seven, and so on. And that also depends on um, your experience, your age, what you're training for, and it's up to you as a coach to decide what's best for your athletes and for yourself as well. So there's a lot of things to consider, but I want you to have as much information as possible at your disposal so that you can make these decisions. So, and not only that, but do you? Is it does it fit around your lifestyle? Uh, your work, your school, you know, your other commitments, family, and are you willing to put in this time that might be available? So willingness to put in the time is not the same thing as having the time available. So it's important to be able to you know, acknowledge that you can link both of them together, pair them both, because they are important. They do work together. And if you, and for in order for short-term and long-term success, it's important to acknowledge these things up front. And again, can you do it with consistency is the other layer of this question. So... Can I do if I'm training for 5K and I want to give myself eight weeks? Um, you know, can I train consistently for those days? Can I gradually build up, and especially if I'm a, an absolute beginner? And the same thing applies to 10K and you know half marathon. Can I give myself 12 weeks to prepare for a half marathon as a beginner? Can I give myself 16 to 20 weeks to prepare as uh, for the marathon and stuff? So those, those are important kind of benchmarks, I think minimum benchmarks, particularly as it pertains to building up training volume and, and an aerobic base of fitness and particularly on the marathon side the long run because it will take a while and you want to get to the point where you're running up you know at least a 20 mile long run potentially once or twice if you give yourself the time so it's easier to do that when you're transitioning upward from other training if you've already run for months or however long and you want to try a marathon and you've already built up a foundation it's much easier to transition upward to the long run but from a beginner standpoint you want to give yourself 16 to 20 weeks minimum. Can you do it in less? Yes, but it's not the norm. It's generally the exception. Um, particularly if you want to run the whole entire marathon, if you want to feel good during it, and even though it'll get tough later on, but if you want to feel good recovering afterward. So the more foundation you build, the easier it's going to be to recover on the back end. So it's something to keep in mind, okay? But that's question one, okay? And again, it's, it's in multiple parts. Do you have the time? Are you willing to put in the time? And can you be consistent with it? Okay, the next one is strength training, and I, and I, and I, gener I generally encourage two days a week of, of a basic functional strength training program, okay, and what I mean by that is doing a circuit involving lower body, core, and upper body that's sports specific or running specific, 
that's only 15 20 minutes but if you can do it twice per week you start to build up some you know muscular strength and and you start to you know build up strength in areas that protect your joints and your ligaments and things like such it'll it'll go a long ways as to helping you become stronger and fitter and um, help you recover on the back end as well particularly if you're doing a lot of training on the pavement so it's, which is less forgiving on the legs if you have grass and dirt and park and trails available definitely take advantage of it um, but I, mean, I understand too that a lot of folks are, don't have that available so work with what you have but it's definitely possible so a strength training routine is another important component next is, is kind of broken up into a couple of pieces it's flexibility okay recovery or hydration and food okay flexibility do you have a stretch routine do you have something that kind of helps prepare you helps kind of make you you know get your muscles warmed up in such a way that it's ready for activity um, uh, personally I'm a Wharton trained and certified musculoskeletal therapist so I'm a flexibility therapist I've been working with the Whartons for a long time and I've learned from them and I've been practicing active, active isolated flexibility for over 20 years I swear by it I, I, I recommend it for all of my runners all of my athletes that I coach and um, it's the to me. It's I've never seen a routine that's more effective and in the front end, preparing you and helping you recover on the back end. And it's the most sports specific routine I've seen out there. So take a look at it. You know, and I, I have a couple of videos of me taking you through a stretch routine and explaining the differences between this and a static routine and some other routines. So take a look at it. I think you'll find it highly beneficial. That's the one component, okay, which works hand in hand with the running and the strength training. Obviously, sleep. You need to make sure you're sleeping enough and consistently. If you if you're sleeping not well, but you sleep a whole bunch the night before a race, that's not going to really work. Sleeping consistently is an important component to helping you recover from the workouts and runs and all the other things, and it's just to help also make sure that you're not getting hurt or not getting sick. So, and the other part is you know fueling and nutrition. Are you eating the right things? It's I, I like to consider consider myself or encourage folks to consider themselves as high performance vehicles. Are you going to put in premium fuel or are you going to put in just regular unleaded fuel? The better fuel you put in your body, the better it's going to serve you in terms of, you know, again, training, performing, and recovering. It all serves, it all serves its purpose. And feeling good, all right? And, you know, and I, I, take, I, I encourage folks to take a look at a supermarket. And it's kind of weird, but if you think about it, when you look in a supermarket, when you go inside, you have the, you know, the dairy, the meats, the fruits, the vegetables, right, the fishes and all that stuff. The majority of the stuff your body needs is on the outer perimeter of the supermarket. The majority of the stuff it does not need, with the exception of some things, are in the aisles. Okay, so it makes it shopping a bit easier if you want to shop to kind of help you get the right things to help you feel good and help your training. So it's a good way of thinking about it. But again, you know, every supermarket's a little bit differently, but that's generally the rule of thumb, and that's how I see it in the majority of supermarkets out there. So eating the right things, fueling, okay, before and after, putting food in your body 30 to 45 minutes after a run or a workout to help you speed up the recovery process, okay? And all these things work hand in hand with each other. And it's these little things like this that really, really help you uh, maximize your performance and maximize feeling good, maximize recovery, which all work together. Okay, that's another thing. Thing after that is speed development. Now, all my runners that I work with, I have, I emphasize speed development as a component of pro uh, continual progression, continual improvement. Whether you're training for a mile or a 3K or 5K or a marathon, half marathon, doesn't matter. Speed development's important. So, what I, I encourage folks to do, and I have pretty much everybody do this, is and this is not, I'm not talking about hard mile repeats or hard 200 meter repeats and stuff like that. I'm talking about sprints, short sprints. So I have folks do, I recommend at least, one day after a run. Or some folks in the beginner, uh, beginners can use it as an actual workout. You sandwich it in between a warm up and a cool down. But one day you do about six to eight 50 to 100 meter sprints up a relatively steep hill. You attack the hill, you stay upright, you lean into the hill, pump your arms and lift your knees, okay? You just attack the hill hard. You walk down nice and easy. You jog down, get a good recovery, go right back up. Okay, it's a, it's a great way of building leg power, leg speed, and improving your speed development over time in a non-invasive way. It's hills. Hill running is not as taxing on the body as flat running or downhill running. Okay, so uphill running is a good way of building speed development. The second the second uh, day would be flat sprints, either of the same distance, 50 to 100 meters, or 100 to 150 meters, a little bit longer, on the flats. Same walk or jog recovery. Again, you can do it after an easy run. I generally have my more experienced folks do it after an easy run. Um, you know, one day of one, one day of the other. 
but some of the beginner folks can use it as a workout. You do a little bit of a warm-up, your strides, your stretches, and then you do the speed development, and then you do a little cool down. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but it's an important component of speed development, and it also helps make you a much more efficient runner, much more stride efficient, and, uh, and as the races get longer, efficiency and energy conservation becomes that much more important. I emphasize this in my videos all the time, and I cannot stress it enough. But the more efficient you are, the better off you're going to be, particularly in races like the half marathon and the marathon. Because when you get tired, your form starts to go from this to this, and then you start working against your own body's momentum. And that's when things start to fall apart. And those are the types of things we want to avoid. And that's where a functional strength training program, flexibility, and speed development all work together. Okay? And that's where they complement things like your recovery runs and other things as well. And that takes me to the, the last component here, which is a two-part component. One is, a, is the semi-long run, and the other one's a long run. Semi-long run, this is more, permanent for, uh, more prominent for folks that are trained for like half marathon and marathon. It's, it's about 78, you're building up towards 75%, or 60 to 75% of what your long run is. And it teaches you to be on your feet for an extended period of time more than once per week. Okay, which transitions towards, and this is when you can do it easy, you can do it progressively faster or, or, and use it as a workout because, again, you don't need two hard workouts per week depending on what you're training for. Even if you're a beginner, you can just do, you build up your aerobic foundation, you build your long run and you do your speed development and some hills, you're in good shape and then you start to add things in over time, workouts and stuff. And once you figure out where your current fitness is, then it's much easier to kind of plug in the appropriate paces. So when I talk about that, in, in a lot of my videos as well and I show you exactly where to find it too and how to kind of identify your training paces based on the current fitness. So, so in the semi long run transitions over to the long run. Now the long run is important no matter what you're training for. If you have middle distance run is doing a, a good solid long run because it's a it's a good strength building component to your training. Even if folks are on a relatively lower volume, I still have a good solid long run and it's very, very important. And obviously folks that are transitioning upward you know, for, if you're training for a half marathon, the bare minimum should be 10 miles, in my opinion. But as you get more fit and as you have run another half marathon stuff, you can get over 12, you get up to 14, even 16. And for the more experienced and more fit athletes, you work your way that way because it's easily transitional, transitional upward to the marathon where I recommend building towards a 20-mile long run. And in some cases, more than 20 for those that can handle it and for those that are ready for it and, and kind of uh, respond well to it. Um, you need to know what it feels like to be at 20 miles for a marathon, just like you need to know what it feels like to be at 10 miles at a half marathon, particularly at race pace. Okay, that's an important component too. And and, not, and I'm not saying do 20 miles at goal marathon pace, but there are certain things that you can do to kind of uh, modify the long runs. But building towards 20 miles once or twice before for a marathon race is utterly important. And giving yourself enough time to do it so that you can do long runs every week or maybe two weeks on or three weeks on, one week down is an important component too. So that's why you can do a 12-week uh, marathon training program. And I even have one on my on my channel, Top Line Running, that's this channel. Um, but I, more, I recommend more so on a 16 or 20-week program to kind of help you ease into these long runs and to recover well and better and it allows you to kind of plug in more components of the training over time in four week blocks or so which is periodization a part of progression and development things that allow you to kind of stay healthy and still kind of build up your training over time okay so these components are you doing these things you know if you're doing some of them great you know, how do you add the other things over time in training? I encourage you to take a look at my fully detailed training programs, 5K, middle distance, 10K, half marathon, marathon. You see how things progress. You see how I build the long runs. You see how I alternate them in certain weeks and stuff. And you'll see exactly, with your coach, you can use these programs as a guide or modify them to uh, you know, a level where you see fit for your athletes. If you're an athlete, you can use this as a guide to follow or modify into your own. It's what you see is most appropriate, but this at least gives you a template of what to look for and, you know, kind of identify, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, maybe I'm not doing this, but where can I incorporate it in such a way that's safe and gradual so that I can maximize, again, I can run a couple of races leading up to a marathon if I want to as indicators of my fitness and progression and or just see where you, how you're progressing along the way. It is good to you know to to check in every so often to not only 
help prevent training from becoming stale, but to see whether you're on the right track, particularly if you have a specific time goal. Okay, and that's important. So I hope you found these things helpful. Again, these ingredients are important. I can't emphasize them enough. It doesn't matter what you're training for. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Feel free to reach out to me directly at blackbeltrunningcoach at gmail.com. I hope you find my other videos as well as this one helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. And if you like content like this and just want a lot of training details, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the videos that I'm going to be putting out and the 200 and plus videos that are already available to you all for free. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Train well, train smart. Talk to you next time.